What's up guys? So this is Coach Vassar. Um, we're gonna talk about Sunday, September 1st, which is also repeated on Wednesday, September 18th. We're gonna see power on the treads, strength on the rower, power on the weight floor. Uh, for this video, I'm gonna try to follow like a similar format that Mike would do. So I'm gonna give you the big picture and then break down the treads and then break down the rower floor, uh, go over the 3G if there's any big differences, um, kind of touch on OTB throughout as well, and go from there. Anyway, so looking at the 2G first, uh, like I said, power on the treads, strength on the rower, power on the weight floor. We're gonna see three shorter blocks for about four minutes each, uh, 90 second walk recovery between, and then a seven minute block to finish out. On the weight floor, it's gonna be set up the same way. Three four minute blocks, 90 second uh, set up between, and then a seven minute row block uh, to finish out there. In total, we are gonna see seven 30 second all outs. And in fact, in the key concepts, they, they, uh, they mentioned that. So looking at the daily beat, key concepts today, uh, treads, we're gonna crush seven 30 second all outs in blocks one, two, and three. They come after long bases. Then in block four, we really put your all out to the test. For the rower, you won't see the rower until the final block. We use it as active recovery to catch your breath after a challenging dumbbell exercise. On the floor, each block is about keeping you moving with a mix of loaded and explosive work with active recovery exercises. With the class setup, we're gonna need benches and of course dumbbells. So for the treads, uh, we're gonna crush seven 30 second all outs over four blocks. The first three blocks give you more active recovery before going harder on each all out. In the final block, you'll have four chances to nail your 30 second all out with plenty of recovery in between. So as we look at the intervals in blocks one, two, and three, very similar format, we're gonna see push base all out. Our goal today is increase the all out intensity of each block for these first three. Block one, we start with a two minute push, 90 second base, 30 second all out. Block two, push decreases to 90 seconds, base increases to 30 seconds by 30 seconds, so we're now two minute base, and of course the all out is still 30. Third block, we'll see the shortest push for just one minute, two and a half minute base, and then a 30 second all out to close it out. When they go into the fourth block, this is the long one, completely drop the push. It's gonna be 30 second intervals of 30 base, 30 all out, and then a walk recovery. Walk recovery will start at 30 seconds, but then it will increase the next two. So after the second round, they'll get a one minute walk recovery. After the third round, they'll get a 90 second walk recovery. As far as bikes and striders go, uh, very simple. So between the first three blocks, they'll start with a push gear, about three to four gears over their base, um, drop it back down to base, and then for the all out, six plus gears over base, with them trying to increase the all out intensity, uh, they, you give them choice of either increasing RPMs with the same all out gear, or maintain RPMs and increase the gear. Either way, wattage output would increase with both of those circumstances. And then in the fourth block, base all out, walk recoveries, um, same idea. Now the longer block does have its own goal. They are looking to at least maintain or possibly increase the all out intensity. So with blocks one, two, and three, we want you to increase. Knowing that you have that long active recovery between, members should be bumping it up every block. But on that fourth one, with the shorter walk recoveries, we're probably gonna maintain all out for the first two, since you only have 30 seconds to recover in between. Um, and then the third one, at least maintain, possibly increase, since you'll have a one minute walk recovery into your 30 second base. And then for the last one, round number four, 90 second walk recovery, 30 seconds at base, they better increase. That's almost two minutes of time to catch their breath before they hit another 30 second all out. Power walkers, they'll increase incline, uh, start at 5% for the two minute push. Joggers and runners, anywhere from one to two over their base. Take that 90 second base, 30 second all out. Of 
course, ramp it up 10% or greater power walkers and then joggers runners, two or more. First all out will set the tone and then can they build off of it for the time remaining on blocks two and three. For the fourth block, they start at base. So no need to worry about their push. Um, if they're all out, they could um, re-establish a new all out to maintain or they could kind of cycle off their last one from block three and build off of that. When we look at OTB for the treadmill portion, um, blocks one, two, and three, uh, we're gonna see a lot of fluctuation between um, orange, green, orange, and then bring it back down. So with the first push, two minutes, um, if they start on that conservative end, we should probably see a little bit of orange a minute in, 90 seconds in, but during that first 20, 30 seconds of base, um, heart rate will probably continue to elevate a little bit, maybe stay about the same. About 45 seconds to a minute, it should start to, it should definitely level out, maybe start to decrease. And then as we kind of close out that base, beats per minute should start to drop. Um, that will kind of carry through a little bit of that all out um, as a response to that increase of, um, of work output. So once they start moving, um, heart rate will start to beat a little bit quicker and then heart rate will obviously rise up and then you'll see that with the OTB. Once they finish that all out, they're probably tapping back into that orange before they start to walk. Um, first 20, 30 seconds of that walk, heart rate will stay orange, maybe keep going up a little bit before of course starting to drop down. Around 90 seconds, um, plenty of time to definitely see back to green. Um, if you get people back to blue, great. Power days, all about peaks and valleys. So um, good opportunity to allow members to let those hearts drop, um, especially as they go ramp it back into a push. Next one's gonna be 90 seconds. It's gonna get the heart rate back up. They'll probably see orange once again, 45 seconds to a minute in, um, definitely the orange by the end. And now they have two minutes at base. So continue to trend upward for a little bit, kind of level out back to the high green. And then for that all out back to orange uh, and then trend downwards. So between the first three blocks, they'll probably get anywhere from about six to nine spot points or so. For the um, last block, with these bases into all outs, the base is really designed to kind of keep the body warm. Um, to allow that heart rate to kind of level back towards that green. So when they hit that all out, it'll go right back up. And just like before during those walks, they'll start to level out, start to dip, start to drop with the longer ones. And then the base will pick it right back up. So they'll probably get another three, um, maybe four spot points on that last tread block. When we look at the weight floor, um, there's gonna be four blocks, each all about nonstop movement. On the floor, there'll be three exercises per block. The first exercise is loaded. The next one is explosive. Finally, you head right into an active recovery exercise for about 20 seconds. So members will kind of count it out themselves. Last block is on the rower, following the same idea of work and active recovery. Um, go explosive and then recover on the rower with a strength base row. So as we look at block one, we have four minutes. Uh, we're gonna see a goblet alternate and step out squat, a alternate and 90 degree pop squat right into a bench seated torso rotation with feet up. Uh, recommendation is a full demo for the two squats and then a partial demo for the core exercise. Options they're gonna have um, body weight variations for a step out squat, um, squat to toe instead of the pop squat. And then for the torso rotation, recommendation for an option is to have the feet on the, on the floor. We're gonna see four minutes of nonstop wor uh, work. With the load and explode, um, we should see tempo change. So for the goblet step out squat, once they step out, think two counts down, two counts up. Uh, when they go to the pop squat, very quick movement. So tempo is going to be more one to one. Um, and with the squat to toe, same idea, one to one, down up real quick. Uh, with the torso rotation, um, challenge in the midline, but have them breathe slow and controlled. Allow their legs to also take a take a recovery since it's all core movements there. In the coach's note, they say drive home the training concept of work and act recovery. The idea is constant movement throughout the block. So start working when you hear three, two, one, begin. 
try to not stop working until you hear three, two, one, rest. On floor block two, um, three new movements. This is gonna be upper body focus. We're gonna see overhead tricep extension uh, with dumbbells, and then the bench push up with an explosive tempo, and then the alternate and thread the needle for the active recovery. Options are gonna be strap tricep extension and then drop to the knees for the push up off the bench. And then instead of the thread the needle, uh, recommendation is child's pose. With the bench push up, it's an explosive tempo, two counts down, pause, and then explode back to the top of the push up in one count. And then for, they recommend that thread the needle is a great way to stretch some of the muscles used in the first two exercises for active recovery. So they're gonna feel a lot of uh, stretching through like the traps, the upper back, um, back of the shoulders, um, between the scapula, which those are all used to kind of stabilize um, the scapula and the shoulders. Uh, so opportunity to kind of loosen things up. So that way, when they go back to that overhead position, things are locked in a good place when they're doing their push-ups. strong position for the shoulders so they don't hurt the joints. Overhead tricep extension is definitely one to kind of be mindful of. Um, people tend to go either way too light or way too heavy. Um, when they go too heavy, they will probably stop at about like 90 degrees and then back up. That 90 degree position will actually put a lot of stress on the elbow um, through the tendons. So we want to see if they could get deeper than 90. So a good cue for this is to see if members could get the dumbbell to touch between the shoulder blades. Um, that's also going to increase the stretch of the tricep, which is going to better promote muscle growth. Um, for a lot of people, that's really hard to do. And then they realize that's way too heavy and they have to go lighter. Um, of course, at the same time, if it's way too light, they're not really going to feel anything. Uh, if they grab the eight pound dumbbell and they're using it with both arms, like it's only four pounds per arm. Um, that's a good option to, or good opportunity to have members try the strap tricep extension. Um, that's my personal go-to when it comes to tricep work. I love that movement um, and it's very modifiable, um, adaptable to get a good challenge. And at the same time, since you're out instead of up, a little bit easier on the shoulder, a lot easier to get that full range of motion all the way back, all the way extended. Um, and you're gonna get great core work as well since you are trying to maintain a plank all the way through. Uh, pet people are gonna be less likely to arch like they would with the overhead work for the tricep extension with a dumbbell. So it's just better overall um, for you know training purposes. When we go to the third block, this is where it's a little unique. It's all body weight stuff. We're gonna see bench decline, high plank, alternated toe tap, followed by the plank pop from the floor and then a body weight superhero. Uh, full demo for the toe tap plank pop, acknowledge the superhero uh, options, uh, toe tap, do it from the floor. And then for the plank pop, perform with hands on the bench. Um, and then for the superhero, they have the bird dog. With the full demo for these two, definitely demonstrate it in a way of how you want members to perform that back to back. So you have your hands on the ground, feet on the bench, they do their toe tap, immediately get off the bench, shift forward a little bit, and then do their plank pops right there. Uh, depending on your studio layout, obviously you might have to play around with that. Um, at my studio, we stagger the benches. So um, every other bench is closer to the wall where their station weight rack is. And then the next bench is further away. Um, so in situations like that, we want people kind of facing different directions. So the odd stations, those are the ones closer to the wall. They're gonna face away from the wall and then they'll perform the movements on that side. And the people who are further away from the wall, they'll face towards the wall and do their stuff right there. Then they don't run into each other, kind of nice. Um, when we move into the last block, um, this is a rowing block, um, but the priority is on the dumbbell exercise. That's gonna be the work the row is active recovery. We're gonna see anywhere from four to eight reps of a clean to front squat. Um, full demo that. Option is to perform a dumbbell squat to bicep curl. And then they do a 300 meter base row, stroke rate about 24 strokes per minute, no more, no less.
we want to have as much power as possible for those four to eight reps if they could do eight reps pretty quick they could probably go up and wait if you notice them start to slow down that's a good opportunity to have like an off mic conversation with them of hey you were you know powerful for five but you started to slow down at six maybe stop at five they don't have to get to eight as long as we're within that range uh, for the rower 300 meter base row key thing though is 24 strokes per minute legs are going to probably be a little taxed from the clean to front squat since they're going to hinge to pop the weight up and then of course they squat down it's a lot of quads a lot of glutes a lot of hamstrings with the dumbbell exercise um leg drive should be right around three up to maybe five um for that base row it's probably going to take most people around 50 to 50 seconds to about a minute 15 or so but as soon as they're done they're right back to their dumbbells um if they need to swap out their weights quick hustle grab their new weights get right back to the rower perform and start another round uh, they'll probably get two three rounds in depending on how fat quickly they get through their clean to front squat um finisher is going to be member choice they could either repeat the dumbbell exercise for 30 seconds or do a 30 second all-out row no recommendation on the stroke rate from the template or in the daily beat um, but if anything, if you wanna keep that uh, focus of strength, try to keep them at 24 strokes per minute, but find all out leg drive. So that way higher watts than before, but still they'll only get 12 strokes in those 30 seconds to make each stroke truly count. With the weight floor stuff, we're gonna see um, nonstop movement. So people who start on the treadmill then head to the floor, they're probably gonna stay in the green for most of the time on the floor. If they start on the floor first, um, they got that three minute rower warm up, and then they get to the floor. They'll probably be in the blue for most of it. Um, maybe high gray, like triple digit, 100 beats per minute, but they're still in the gray. Um, but definitely during that third block when they get on the rower, they'll probably find high blue, maybe get to green a little bit. Um, that way when they do head to the treads, they are, they're ready to rock and roll on the treadmill. When we look at the 3G, um, Treadmill is pretty similar, um, but key difference is only two blocks. We are gonna see a six and a half minute block on the treadmill, a one minute walk recovery, and then a seven minute block after that. Rowers, same idea, six and a half minutes, one minute um, transition, and then seven minutes for that second block. And then on the weight floor, we're gonna see a 10 minute block, a one minute transition, and then three and a half minutes. So as you look at the template, you'll realize the treads and the rowers are paired up with exact same intervals. So block one for the treadmill, uh, we're gonna see push all out walk recoveries. They have three rounds. The push will decrease like we saw on the treads, but there is no base. All outs will stay the same at 30 seconds. And the goal here for block one and block two is to maintain or increase all out intensity. They'll get a one minute walk recovery between the second or between the first and the second round and the third round. So 90 second push, 30 second all out, one minute walk recovery, uh, followed by a one minute push, 30 all out, and then a 30 push, 30 all out. You could kind of look at the big picture here of like, hey, this is gonna be two minutes of work, one minute walk recovery, 90 seconds walk recovery, then a one minute walk recovery. So OT beat's gonna be you know, pretty high as well since they go push all out for two minutes. Uh, they'll probably get one to two splat points for each um, interval here. So they'll probably finish with, you know, about three to six in block one. When they go to block two, this is the exact same block as block four from the 2G class. So 30 base, 30 all out, 30 walk recovery, four rounds. Second walk recovery is of course one minute and then the third walk recovery is 90 seconds. One thing to be aware of is during that walk recovery for one minute in block two, that is also when you're gonna set up the weight floors block two. I'll go more into that in a second. We look at the rower. Um, once again, they're timed with the treads. 90 second push, 30 second all out, one minute recovery row. And then when they look at block two, base all out walk recovery row. The key thing here is the entire time when they are doing their work between base or push or all out, 
they are right at 24 strokes per minute. Knowing that they're going to be doing this for 14 and a half minutes, uh, this is a good opportunity to do like a mini um, crew row setup where maybe there's one to three people in the row group that have great form, they have great control of their tempo, and have them kind of lead the group of get everyone to follow them, stay in sync with that 24 stroke rate. Uh, and if they are not finding that uncomfortable feeling at that lower stroke rate, how can we drive back harder to make that water spin and turn white quicker than before? And of course they'll finish as a 30 second all out, still 24 strokes per minute. The floor block, block one is 10 minutes, one minute setup, and then block two, three and a half minutes. Block one is a combined sequence of blocks one and two from the 2G. So they do six, six movements here. They got both of the squats, the torso rotation, the tricep extension, bench push up with explosive tempo, and then the thread the needle. When it comes to the setup, recommendation is full demo for the two squats, partial demo for everything else in block one. Same options, of course. And then in block two, this is the third block that we saw on the floor. So the bench toe tap, plank pop, superhero repeat for three and a half minutes until they do a 30 second plank pop as their finisher. Definitely get heart rate up here before they eventually head to the treadmills or if they are finishing up class then they'll finish and be able, maybe one, one more splat point. That's it, that's uh, September 1st, September 18th. Once again, power, strength, power. Any feedback? Love to hear your thoughts. Um, I'll kind of course correct and make adjustments as we go through this uh, and I'll get another one out here shortly. Cut you down, y'all. Have a good one.